You can start na do. Uh, this is a request for me to lecture on test question construction. This is just going to be a very short lecture because I because I will only focus on multiple choice questions because this is what the department usually uses when giving test questions. So, oh, ay, ikaw pala, Nueva, sorry, I forgot. Kala ko ako ang mag yes, Okay. <laughs> um, when, we, when you do think of questions, please take note of the reason why we give test, uh, we give questions or do we give exams to our learners. First, uh, at the level of PGI, um, fourth year clerks and residents, uh, we must actually measure yung expectations that the residents, that the learners knows how or knows what, which means uh, we want to measure the extent of knowledge, stock knowledge that the learner has gained from from the expected uh, from the time frame, like for example, half a year or the whole year. So usually, if we want to measure knowledge, we will have written exams. And then next is the skills uh, evaluation. So the learner must show how. So that is measured through OSCE. But for now, we will just focus on written exams. Probably, uh, if you want to ask questions about OSCE, uh, please do so. Right, next slide, please. OK, so this is uh, the first thing to do is to identify topics and items. Like, for example, topic is mood disorder and you are expected to give 10 item questions. There are so many uh, subtopics under mood disorder. So one of the first things to do is to enumerate the subtopics. And then like, for example, in this one, para short lang, tsaka magkasya sa slide, history, causes, signs, and symptoms, and treatment. So divide the 10 items according to how many subtopics you have. So if there are more than 10 uh, items na mas marami ang subtopics over 10 items, you might want to incorporate like uh, psychoso like in this case, psych psychosocial and psychoanalytic in one question. Next slide, please. So there are many types of written exams. You have your true or false, which is the easiest exam to write, but also easiest to answer for the student. Because 50% ang ano, chance, if the, if the student doesn't know and will just guess, the student will have 50% chance of getting the correct answer. But that does not really measure the amount of learning the student will have. There are modified true or false, like yung true or false, tapos underline the the ano, the word or the phrase that makes the sentence wrong, and then write kung ano yung to correct the the sentence and make it true. And then you have the matching type, which which uh, entails giving all the factors in a certain question. Tapos siya na lang yung matching type. As uh, the, so the learner will just match the, the items. But uh, this is partially measuring only because yung guessing talaga is pwede naman siya ma maging totoo. No? Uh, if I am a rational uh, exam taker, I will of course first do the ones I know and then rationalize the rest of the items from the selection. So I will have probably a better chance of selecting the correct option, even if I don't know. Multiple choice questions are those that we usually do. And there are, uh, I will talk more about that. Fill in the blanks is good 
also good for the test maker because it's easy, very easy to do, but it only measures root memory. Um, meaning yung na memorize lang niya, not necessarily measuring understanding. An essay is actually uh, very good, pero toxic to correct. <laughs> Because, you know, mas mahaba ang sagot sa question. And, but in essay form, we are actually measuring the analytical capacity of the learner as well as comprehension. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is an example of a multiple choice question. There are two parts in a multiple choice question. The stem, which is the question itself, like which of the following is a cognitive symptom of depression? And the alternatives are the choices, insomnia, loss of death, loss of appetite, inappropriate guilt. So yeah, so uh, what is difficult is uh, using the correct wording in making the stem, but more difficult also to look for uh, what to put for alternatives. Next slide, please. Okay, so there are common exam mistakes, like for example, vague stem. Kunyari ito, Davao. A, contains the tallest mountain in the Philippines. B, economy of the area is good. C, located in the north of the Philippines. D, is the second largest city in the Philippines. Why is this uh, incorrect because the stem only says Davao and the the learner or the exam taker does not really know what aspect in Davao the the question is all about if you notice uh, there are wrong uh, wrong items alternatives that are correct like a, contains the tallest mountain. B, economy is good. The rest, C and D, is wrong. So if the learner doesn't know what to look for sa, sa ano, kasi vague ang STEM, Davao lang, the learner will be confused. The mga students might answer A, students might answer B. So kung vague, there are two correct answers actually. Next, next slide please. Okay, so good STEM is what is the best description of Davao City? So, yan na yan siya. So, what do you think is the best description? Letter A. Hindi na ako magtanong ng sino magsagot. Okay, next please. Okay, avoid wordy stems by removing irrelevant data. Tingnan nyo ang STEM. Masyadong mahaba. Tapos yung mga choices may iklik lang. So, uh, suppose you are a mathematics professor who wants to determine whether or not teaching of a unit on probability has a significant effect on your students. You decide to analyze their scores from a test they took before the instruction and their scores from another exam taken from the instruction. Which of the following t-tests is appropriate to use in this situation? So, yan siya. What do you think is the correct answer? Aka silent naman. <laughs> okay, so uh, so uh, we have uh, actually similar scenarios in test construction, but in our case, we usually use mga clinical cases, and then we ask which is uh, which of the following is the best. A diagnosis or what. So please try to avoid that. Na? Next. Yung case, uh, yung case present, uh, yung case, ano gani? if you want to discuss a case in multiple choice, make sure that you only focus on giving data according to what you want the learner to focus on. Na? So uh, this is uh rephrasing of the previous question when analyze when analyzing your students pre-test and post-test scores to determine if your teaching has had a significant effect an appropriate statistic to use 
is the t-test for so ang answer is dependent samples so yan na shortcut na siya compared to before next please and then avoid negatively worded stem example a nurse is assessing a client who has pneumonia which of these assessment findings indicates that the client does not need to be suctioned? Ang selections, diminished breath sounds, absence of adventitious breath sounds, inability to cough up sputum, wheezing following bronchodilator therapy. Sige, you answer, you answer that on your own. But let me just focus on the nap. So it's only not, but except, ano pa, uh, meron pang uh, not true, incorrect, yung mga ganyan. And there are some, some items or some stem that are worded and, and contain double negatives. No? Uh, this is, uh, the following is not, uh, the following is not a symptom of the uh, sige, ulitin ko. The following is a cognitive is not a cognitive symptom of depression, except so these are double negatives, and we really try not to use that. In in sa ganito, like not usually, we can actually use that, but it should be limited to very, very few questions only. Next, please. Okay, so. Okay, so good example is which of these assessment findings, if identified in a client who has pneumonia, indicates that the client needs suctioning. So if you notice, wala na yung negative. So what do you think is the answer? Absence of ad adventitious breath sounds, respiratory rate of 18, ability, inability to cough up sputum, wheezing prior to bronchodilator therapy. So answer on your own. And the answer is, next slide, please. Okay, inability to cough up sputum. Next slide, please. So also avoid poorly alternate, poorly written alternatives. So an alternative should contain the following, the answer and the distractors. No? Hindi natin gusto kutawin, uh, magkutaw ang utok sa learner, but we need to give, provide distractors. So uh, distractors are chosen well. Hindi yung basta-basta lang na distractor. So common mistakes, how the various alternatives relate to the answer and to the question. And it is ideal that mutually exclusive, homogeneous, and consistently phrased alternatives should be written. Next slide, please. So... Um, question yes. ako, Anong, what do you mean po, Doc, yung sa previous slide? Mutually exclusive, Doc. Uh, wait, wait, ha. Hindi ko Eto, pa yung marinig. Wait, Ay, mag, ano lang muna ako. Mag-headphone na lang ako para marinig ko kayo. Okay, Doc. Your question was um sa ideal na ano doc um distractors or the the choices and it, what what does it mean doc na mutually exclusive it means that uh, the items should be related to the stem question the the alternative should be related to the test questions ah, okay doc like for example ah, sige Going back to the example on uh, cognitive, the, the following are the cognitive, ano, the cognitive symptoms of depression. So, lahat ng alternative should relate to depression. Like, for example, poor sleep, thoughts of death, and then uh, loss of appetite, and then uh, ano pa yung iba alternative? Loss of appetite. And then, ano, uh, 
weight loss, yung mga ganyan. So, the correct answer is, ano man ang correct answer? <laughs> I don't, so, ang, ang question, bale, um, pero di ba, Doc, yun yung homogenous, but mutually exclusive? Uh, uh, mutually, ay, sorry, homogenous, uh, yeah, ay, <laughs> ang naano ko lang yung homogenous na last ano, statement mo. Yung mutually exclusive is when the, yung mga destructors gani, they, they seem to relate to the stem, but actually is not related so all of them like yung kanina example all of them uh, are excluded uh, except one answer yung thoughts of death all of them are mutually exclusive but mutual because they they actually are under the same main symptomatology of the ano of the what's this of the stem question na uh, symptoms talaga siya ng depression but exclusive siya kasi nga while they are all uh, symptoms they do not actually uh, they do not reflect the cognitive symptom of depression homogeneous siya in a way that all of them are symptoms of depression and consistently await itong consistently phrase uh, if you notice the sen the statement, they are more or less the same in length. So I will, siguro yung, yung sa phrasing, I will talk more about that. So naklaro na. Yes, hindi no. pwede na kung mutually exclusive, hindi pwede na. So cognitive uh, symptoms of, ano, of depression. Depression. So ang isa sa, ano, is yung thoughts up uh, yung euphoric yung euphoric mood kasi hindi actually automatic na yan siya na madali lang yung magiging question rule out okay daw so ma rule out da yun tapos okay. pero uh, when we talk of uh, yung cognitive symptom of depression hindi rin pwede na sabihin na uh, grandiose uh, grandiose delusion or grandiosity automatic hindi siya exclusive kasi makita man kaagad na uh, off talaga siya sa ano sa alternatives okay do na clear na sige yes, no. i hope clear ako okay <laughs> next slide please okay so avoid overlapping alternatives like for example it in for example what is the average effective radiation dose from chest uh, ct in sa scan. So A, 1 to 8. B, A to 16. C, 16 to 24. D, 24 to 32. If you notice, yung letter A and B contains 8. Tapos yung B nag-contain na naman siya na 8. So nag overlap sila. So we don't usually, uh, this is avoided. So next. This is a good um question if you notice nagsunod-sunod lang siya no 1 to 7 8 to 15 16 to 24 34 to 32 yung asterisk means this is the correct answer when it comes to radiation 1 to 7 only na so notice from lowest to highest so we don't uh, we don't put our alternatives as Letter A, 1.7, tapos B, 16 to 24, yung nakarambol siya, naka, ano din siya, nag-follow din siya ng hierarchy. Next slide, please. Okay, also avoid dissimilar alternatives. Ito yung sinasabi ko na exclusivity and pakibalik and uh, yung pagiging homogeneous. So Davao City is well widely known as the largest producer of durian be the safest city in the world be the best city in the philippines be the birthplace of inday sara duterte ano sa tingin niyo ang best answer okay answer on your own next slide please i wait go back okay 
So while bakit siya poor alternative kasi malayo ang connection ng alternatives no from fruit to area of the ano area uh, of the city according to square miles uh, according to miles best city according to quality of life the city offers the residents birthplace of Indaisara so yung ang klaro talaga is uh, Siyempre, the correct is birthplace of Indaisara kasi we are not the largest producer of durian. We are not the safest city in the world. Uh, to be, ano ito, to be proven being the best city in the Philippines. But it's a fact that it is the birthplace of Indaisara Duterte. But uh, it's not the correct answer. It's how the alternatives are not related to each other. Next, please. Okay, so Davao City is widely known for its pomelos, guavas, corn, rice. So if you notice, all are produce. No? Wala nang iba about area or quality of life. So this, is, this tests the student's knowledge of Davao's produce. So if you think of ano, test questions, you you check whether ano yung about kunyari, about PTSD that you want the students to know then you ask questions about that and alternative should be similar quite similar to each other okay next slide please avoid implausible alternatives katuganing automatic common sense impossible so, example, which of the following artists is known for painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel? I hope you are familiar with this. So, A, Warhol, B, Flintstone, C, Michelangelo, D, Santa Claus. Of course, the other, except for Michelangelo, the, re the rest are impossible. Cartoon character man ang Flintstone, so hindi talaga siya makapaint. Santa Claus is a mythical figure. Na? although children uh, live in Santa Claus. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so what is a good question for this? Which of the following artists is known for painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel? Botticelli, Da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Raphael. So the correct answer is Michelangelo. So if you notice, all are artists. All are artists. Next slide, please. Yan yung sa ano ha, homogeneity ng alternatives. So avoid inconsistent phrasing of alternatives like poor. For example, the term operant conditioning refers to the learning situation in which A, a familiar response is associated with a new stimulus. B, individual associations are linked together in sequence. C, a response of the learner is instrumental in leading to a subsequent reinforcing event. D, verbal responses are made to verbal stimuli. Mekong, kay nag-lecture ka man nito kanina, what do you think is the correct answer? <laughs> what letter? Mekong? Yung response. Yung... Anong letter? Letter A, B, C, D? C, though. Okay. Bakit? What made you think this is the correct answer? Kasi my behavior po, though. Ah, okay. So, uh, if I am a rational uh, ano, uh, examinee and I don't know kung sino saan dito ang correct i will check okay ano yung hindi ko uh, alam ano yung alam ko okay wala pero if i guess uh, ito siguro letter c kasi ito yung pinakamahaba na sentence so uh, it is this is a common mistake that kung ano yung correct answer yun yung pinakamahaba that's why if i am a rational yung mag ano la ako hindi ako nagamini my name mo mga ganyan, kundi 
I look at the longest sentence kasi the probability of it being the correct answer is high. So that is why if we want to if we want to look at the analyze the phrasing all the phrases should be the same length. Next slide please. So this is a good example. The term operant conditioning refers to the learning situation in which A, a familiar response is associated with a new stimulus. B, individual associations are linked together in sequence. C, the learner's response leads to reinforcement. D, verbal responses are made to verbal stimuli. So, medyo mahirapan ang ano, if I am guessing, I will have difficulty kasi more or less, pag, pag tingin sa sentence, parang halos pareho. So, the length of the answer is longer than the distractors. So avoid that. No? It should be the same no? length. Hindi na magagamit ang testmanship tricks ani doc. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct, Joya. <laughs> okay. So, siyempre, uh, unahan natin yung mga ganyang klaseng ano, examinees. Na, kasi we want to really measure the learning. So the term operant, I wait, tapos na ito. Next slide, please. Cascading type of multiple choice. Actually, uh, it is not, a, hindi talaga siya sana, but uh, there are those who want to use cascading type of multiple choice. Ang cascading type of multiple choice is when, kunyari, number one, Ito yung question. Tapos, uh, test question number two. Of the answer in number one. Tapos, another question. So, number three question. Of the answer in number two. So, mga cascading questions. Na, uh, in the recent board exam for medicine, gan, nag, nangyari na may cascading type of multiple choice. So, this is an example. Which of the following mood disorder has the strongest genetic evidence? Bipolar 1, bipolar 2 disorder, persistent depressive disorder, major depressive disorder. Next slide, please. Of the answer in question number 1, which of the following is the best treatment? Lithium, fluoxetine, carbamazepine, clonazepam. Next question, please. Uh, next slide, please. Of the answer in question 2, what is the common side effect? See? Uh, it's it's challenging for the learner kasi kung mali ang kanyang answer sa number one, sunod-sunod na siya mali. So three points, uh, mali yung kanyang ano, sagot. Huh? So uh, easy to construct, easy for the test constructor, but very challenging and difficult to for the examinee. Ma, ma test talaga yung comprehension ng ng examinee. Next, if you want to uh, check for comprehens comprehension. And then now we go to test analysis. Okay? So when we do make test questions, we want to measure recall comprehension analysis. Huh? Because uh syempre if residents and interns and medical clerks we want to specially know if they are they have understood what they learned so my learning and they are able to apply so for recall we are just actually measuring the items or the aspects that the student has memorized okay example which of the following are SSRI, so floxetin, escitalopram, mirtazapine, so etc. So uh, these are rote memory kasi na memorize na na ang SSRI blah 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 blah, SNRI blah 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 blah, mga ganyan. So for comprehension is actually a little difficult to construct kasi kailangan din na pag-isipan ang ano comprehension questions. It is meant to measure the understanding of the learner regarding a certain topic and how the learner has assimilated the information. So 
uh, you can, for comprehension, you can actually ask questions about differences, okay? Uh, the similarity, which of the following uh, symptomatology is shared by, kunyare, um, shared by major depressive disorder, uh, hindi, ganito, by, uh, bipolar 1 and bipolar 2. So, ano man ang ma-share nila. So, yun yung, ano, that's, that's actually measuring comprehension and not rote memory. So, for analysis, this is extra difficult to, uh, to make. Yung STEM mismo is difficult to make kasi pin, pinag-iisipan talaga ito ng test maker. So, and why is that? Because you want to measure how the learner has applied the knowledge and check the greater understanding of the meaning of the information. So usually essay questions can also be applied to, mu to multiple questions in analysis. The best, uh, the best way to really assess this is asking for essay questions. But we can also use uh, multiple choice questions. Medyo ano lang, pag-iisipan lang talaga ng maayos. Next slide, please. Okay, this is an example of a recall question, example of an auditory hallucination, believing that one is poisoned, hearing commanding voices, imagining that one is rich, seeing demons instead of pigs. Okay, so of course, sayun rakaayu. The, the entry is letter B. Next. Okay, this is an example of a comprehension question. According to Snyder et al. Kunyari na na pabasa ko na sa inyo ang work ni Snyder et al. Caffeine differs from adenosine in that caffeine A stimulates behavior in the mouse and in humans, whereas adenosine stimulates behavior in humans only. B has mixed effects in the brain, whereas adenosine has only a stimulatory effect. C increases cyclic AMP concentrations in target neurons, whereas adenosine decreases such concentrations. D, permits release of neurotransmitters when it is bound to adenosine receptors, whereas adenosine inhibits such release. E, inhibits both neuron firing and reproduction of phosphodiesterase when there is a sufficient concentration in the brain, whereas adenosine inhibits only neuron firing. Okay, so comprehension. You, you notice it's a little challenging or challenging talaga. So what is the answer? <laughs> Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Ay, sorry. Back. Gusto niyo malaman ang answer? Please go back. Okay, what is the answer? What do you think is the answer? Letter C. Next slide, please. So this is an example of analysis question. Rita, 45 years old, has been feeling low the past month after her husband left. She stopped going to work, had poor sleep and appetite. She no longer saw her friends, preferring to stay in her room. She is taking medications for hypertension and heart problems. What is the best medication for her? So why is this analysis? Because when the when the learner reads this, the learner needs to come up with a diagnosis. And then the learner needs to check on the mechanism of actions of the uh, alternatives, the side effect of the alternatives, so that the learner will be able to come up with the correct answer. Okay, so what do you think is the best alternative? So the, the learner will be able to understand that the patient is taking other medications and check if the alternatives will have interaction, drug-drug interaction with the medications that the patient is taking. Okay, so that is analysis. So medyo mas deep, uh, we are measuring the learners deeper understanding 
and uh, application of that understanding according to the different factors involved. Okay, next slide, please. So how do we assign weight and how many, how many items for each questions? So uh, how many recall questions, how many comprehension questions, and how many analysis questions? Please take note, recall questions are the easiest to answer. Tapos moderate ang difficulty sa comprehension and difficult sa analysis. So uh, next slide, please. So, kunyari lang, if there is a 50-item test, ano yung weight ng mga ano, recall, comprehension, analysis? I think, this is, I think this is what we are doing now, how to compute. So, sa atin, uh, recall questions are one point. Comprehension questions are 0. 0.75. And analysis questions, they are equivalent to 0. 0.50. Yes, Doc. That's how we no, all... Tama, no? Okay. So, kung, kung ganyan yung, ano, yung weight ng each question for a 50-item test, we can we assign recall questions, 25 items, comprehension questions, 15 items, and analysis question of 10 items. And why is that? Because the more difficult the questions are, the less likely the students will be able to answer it. So, kung unfair kung i 1.1 point all or mas marami ang analysis over recall questions but um and again it would, it would depend on why you are giving the exam if you want to if you want your learners to show you their understanding then probably mas marami ang comprehensive comprehension questions and analysis. So it would now depend on the goal of giving exams. There is this uh, school of thought that the exam questions should be uh, stated in a way that kung hindi alam ng, ng student, the student will learn from reading the test questions. So para, para daw, uh, you measure the the how the student the amount of uh, information the student has imbibed but also may ma teach mo din daw siya no that is actually even for me that is actually uh, a challenge to make such questions so next item please uh, next okay so no, lastly no, uh, yes no. <laughs> so uh, like for example, yung mga exam natin, de ba? Sa mm. ano for the resident. So, uh, the the ano the training officer will decide on the distribution or how many percent um um yung recall, kinat how many percent oh. dapat ang comprehension questions. Kasi di ba pag gumagawa tayo ng questions, we identify it as recall or comprehension or analysis. So, ang percentage ng distribution. Uh, how should it be distributed ba? For the, for example, you're given the questions. Oh, oh. And then, um, should it be 25% na ano, na recall? Or how, how do we distribute it? Would that depend on the ano, examiner? Or si Joya yung ano? Kasi para ma-remember ko, meron tayong oh, uh, distribution before eh. Yes, Ilang doc. percent? This is what we follow, Doc. The recall should be um, half of the questions and then lesser yung comprehension and pinaka konte yung analysis. So 50%, 25 and 15 and 10. Ah, 15 and 10. And then, uh, sorry, 30 ah. and 20. 100% naman do. So 50% recall, 30% and then 20%. Okay. Thanks. Oh, sorry. Thank you for clarifying. That will guide us. So we will be mindful of how many questions we'll give regarding ano. Yung challenge na kasi we only have like for example, uh, kunyari sa akin, anxiety, kadaming, 
kadaming items na kailangan kong i-measure but given only 10 points, 10 questions. So it's a 10 questions. Di ba no, Joya? I-divide yan siya into five for, ano, yes, five yes. for recall, uh, three for comprehension, and two for analysis. So that is how I do it. Tapos, para hindi ko makalimutan, in kaso lang may mag-challenge sa ano, so I also uh, submit the source and the page where the question was taken from. Para mas easy, ma-recall, ma-ano, ma-retrieve ni Joya in case there are questions regarding the question. Yes, no. uh -oh, So I hope you, the rest uh, of the consultants will also do that para Madali ang buhay ni Dr. Joya. <laughs> okay. So, lastly, ito yung uh, recommended to avoid. Yung always, never, usually, maybe, often. Sandali lang. Tama ba ang spelling ko sa usually? So, yan siya. Bakit? If I, if I am, uh, parang, i, ano ko, i, kunyari, hindi ko alam ang sagot. Tapos, tingnan ko yung stem. My always, never, usually, maybe, often. Parang, parang mahirapan ako kasi parang mahirap talaga kung may always. Like clinical symptoms, always have, ganyan. So, pero if it is in, in alternatives, mga usually, never, always, maybe, hindi ko na yan siya i-consider. Kaya more often than not, it is wrong. So kahit hindi ko alam ang question, just to analyze the question, maru alam ko na kung ano yung i-rule out na nagkaroon na ng, ng idea ang mga residents <laughs> on how to answer questions. So yan siya. Hindi ko na yan siya kay always, never ha it is not always. no Never, it is not always, never. Yung mga ganyan. So avoid using that. I think this is the last question. Uh, this is the last slide. Tama ba? Okay. So, uh, I did not uh, I did not touch on OSCE. Baka you might have uh, questions with OSCE. Okay. So, if there are no questions, thank you for listening. I hope Nakatulong ako sa inyo when you make your questions. Residents, when you do your test, uh, when you do your exams for the students. Thank you, Doc. Um, wala, do we have any questions, clarifications? Okay, wala. You, Doc. <laughs> okay. Wala na, Thank you so much. Salamat Doc. naman. Also, okay lang, Doc. I will post also the slide and this video dun sa Viber group natin. No problem. Okay. Thank you, Doc. Okay. Thank you, Doc. Bye. Thank you, Doc. Bye. Bye.